So this is a follow-up to the previous video about the laser blade cutter that I've got. I wanted to show you where I'm at with the projects that I'm testing. Um, not all have succeeded, but there are some successes. So the first video I was showing, this is the blue slit paw prints. That's the underglaze paw prints. They were done with the stickers. I don't know how well you'll be able to see it in this, but I'll include images. Um, the ones where I stamped the pattern in using the cutout um, of the, uh, the clear acrylic, I think it is. Um, they've worked really well. I'm really pleased with particularly <coughs> these coaster designs because that's almost no effort whatsoever to add your logo to it and it, the effect is really good. And obviously this is a fairly simple pattern but you could do anything like that. Um, quick to cut, quick to apply, really nice effect. So I'm pleased with that. And the next thing I wanted to test was um, using the principle of just cutting out the stickers. Again, this is not anything remarkable, but it's let's say it's not a, a new technique, but it just allows me to cut my own stickers. I did this one, which I then applied wax resist, so the glaze isn't where the wax resist was, so it kind of reverses back out. Then, with those tests successful, I wanted to transfer that to mugs. So I've got the paw prints up the side of the mug. This was the goal, uh, giving these to my gran. Um, I also did a color change one. In fact, I did a couple with the color change. This is something that I hadn't tested before, but a while ago I bought white underglaze. So essentially it's uncolored underglaze. So it's a bit cheaper. And I bought it because I had an idea which was just that I could mix my own stains in to colour it. So rather than having to buy a whole tub of underglaze in every colour, I could have a generic base essentially and then just colour it as and when I wanted it to. Uh, and that works perfectly. I wasn't measuring the stain, I was just putting a decent amount in to a white underglaze base. So if, you're, if you use very small amounts of underglaze and want a range of colours and have stains, I'd recommend that. That works quite well. I then tried the uh, using wax resist through the sticker to put paw prints on the side of a mug and then glazing over the top of it, but without any clear defined edge for the glaze to flow around, which it will do if you have one, um, it just covered up the paw prints, so that was a failure. It looked like, looked promising prior to going into the kiln, but without any, any edge to it to stop it um, from filling in the gaps, it just has. I think if rather than doing wax resist I'd done something to give a bit of surface texture and then wax resist so built up underglaze or slip or whatever some some edge for it to break over that would have probably worked much better but that's a failure so uh, that didn't work and then we get on to the things that are yet to work but I feel have promise so I wax resisted uh, a coaster and then I used the laser cutter to cut into the wax. Now you can see when it catches the light that it has affected the wax but it doesn't seem to as you can see from the the glaze application on that bottom one it hasn't actually stopped it resisting. The laser is capable of affecting the wax resist but with the settings that I am using and those are just those are the numbers for the etch setting. With those settings it's not removing the wax. Now it could be that it's burning off most of it, but there's still, it's too fast for the wax to completely go and then it recondenses. So it's possible multiple passes, having a stronger breeze over it. There's an extractor fan on the unit, but um, that doesn't make a strong draft. So possibly having a fan blowing the wax clear might help. If I can get this to work, then I'm gonna be able to transfer a very precise pattern and keep a lot of detail in the design and apply a design. This could be to a flat surface or with the rotational attachment, it could be to a rotary surface or around the outside of a mug. At the moment, it's not working the way that I wanted it to. Then I tried lasering directly into the glaze. It's marked it, but I've tried this on a few different glazes. It seems that some won't pick it up at all. Some like this one, it's quite patchy and then others mark perfectly cleanly. Now I assume that's something to do with how the glaze absorbs the laser and the places where it 
absorbs it and doesn't. Uh, I think it's just, it needs to receive all of that energy and be absorbed in order to mark. And some glazes will resist that a bit more. You can brush over a medium or stick on a sheet um, that will absorb the energy and then transfer a mark through. So I think that's why. Um, I also have used it to etch directly into clay, and this is so this is into fully fired clay, and it gives a very precise mark with essentially no texture. You can sort of see it's gone a bit glossy, but I don't think it's got any cut depth to it. Um, and that wasn't, that's with the laser turned fairly high up, but you could obviously do a lot more power, and I don't know what that would do to it. So, my current thoughts are. I've tried a couple of different wax resists and a couple of different settings for this. I'm not sure the wax, as I say, I'm not sure it's leaving. So a few different options. I could do multiple passes to try and burn it off repeatedly until it goes. I didn't try that. I could try colouring the wax with more pigment so it absorbs the laser better. I think that will help. I've tried a few different waxes. Um, this one with a bit more colour seems to absorb it better, but they all react to it. There's also the option of using something other than wax. The reason that I wanted to use wax is because it's designed to burn off. You could use latex or PVA or something else and that might work but it also might produce fumes and I'm assuming the fumes from this are slightly better for you. I mean in theory it's extracting all of the, the air and putting it outside but it's still not something that I want to take any great risks with if I don't have to. But yeah so I think possibly different settings, different pigment in the wax. But I think it, something like that might help. And the other thing is it doesn't have to necessarily be wax. And I was gonna try this today and then forgot to bring my laptop. But I think actually possibly sticking the sticker material to it. And then you could cut an incredibly ornate pattern out of the sticker material and you don't have to then try and transfer the sticker material. So the advantage to this over just cutting a sticker with a plotter normally would be that you could get an incredibly detailed cut because of the laser and you wouldn't then have to move the sticker. In every other regard you would be using a sticker in the way that you would normally use a sticker. So you'd be cutting out a design in a sticker that's stuck and it's the sticker that's resisting it. So you, you haven't sort of gained anything from having the laser other than the ability to cut through a sticker that's stuck to something with that level of clarity. That's what I wanted to try. I'm basically certain it's going to work because the laser cuts through paper, the paper works very well as a resist, um, so it's just going to be a case of finding the right label uh, to cut through with it. But I've got some paper stickers and I'm pretty sure that's going to work. Marking directly into the glaze or into the clay could be good, but I'm not sure exactly what I'd use that for. Going back to the previous conversation from a couple of weeks ago about seconds and how you mark them, in theory this would let you mark a second with the word second because it's etched directly into fired clay and you can add a great deal of detail and precision. The difficulty would be getting a mug, say, underneath the laser at the right height. I'm not quite sure how you'd do that, but in theory if you could, a laser would seem to be quite a good way to mark clay after it's been fired. And then finally, not to do with clay, but I've also been using it to cut cardboard and I have done a reindeer and a T-Rex and I will show you the pictures of them now and I will put the link to the blog post where I've shared the printable files for them. You can cut them out with a laser cutter or if you don't have a laser cutter but still want to make them, you could just print them out, stick them to a bit of card and cut them out. They're a little bit fiddly to cut out and assemble but they're kind of cool when they're done. And the reindeer is designed to have antlers made from twigs that you can go and you know, find a twig. So it's quite fun if you've got a toddler to try and get them to help you pick the best possible twig, because it's amazing how long you can spend looking at twigs and assessing different twigs on their antler-like merit. But yeah, that's completely unrelated to anything. It's just the laser cutter does a fantastic job of cutting cardboard. And prior to this, I've always cut them by hand and it's been a laborious process but with this it's a couple of minutes of just watching machine which is a, a vast improvement so i'll share those files i'll keep testing these things and i'll do a further update once i've figured out how best to add the laser because at the moment it's promising but it's not there yet 
and there are quite a few more things that I need to test before I know what is going to work and what isn't going to work. But yeah, with any luck, hopefully in the new year, I'll have a, a more conclusive project finished for you.